Hare Krishna, everyone. Let's accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Tonight, um, we have recitals. Um, Shyam Govinda Prabhu and Hemangi Radha Mataji reciting Kanto 2, Chapter 7, verses 36 to 53. Hemangi Mataji, are you on? Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please mm -hmm. um, start by um, the invoca invocations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, everyone. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Uh, text 36. Kale namilita diam avam shaya nirnam soka yusham swa nigamobata dura paraha avirhita swam anu yugam sahi satyavatyam veda drumam vito vita pasho vibajishyatisma. The Lord Himself, in His incarnation as son of Satyavati, Yasadev, will consider his compilation of the Vedic literature to be very difficult for the less intelligent persons with short life. And thus, he will divide the tree of Vedic knowledge into different branches according to the circumstances of the particular age. Text 37. Deva dvisham nigama vartmani nishtitanam Prabhu Purbir Mahena Vihitabir Adrasya Turbihi Lokan Natam Mati Vimoham Ati Prala Pralo Pam Vesham Vidaya Bahu Bashyata Anupadharmyam. When the atheist, after being well versed in the Vedic scientific knowledge, annihilate inhabitants of different planets flying unseen in the sky on well-built rockets prepared by the great scientist Maya, the Lord will bewilder their minds by addressing himself attractively as Buddha and will preach on the sub-religious principles. Text 38 <laughs> Thereafter, at the end of Kali Yuga, when there exists no topics on the subject of God, even at the residences of so-called saints and respectable gentlemen of the three higher castes, and when the power of government is transferred to the hands of ministers elected from the low-born Sudra class or those less than them, and when nothing is known of the technique of sacrifice, even by word, at that time the Lord will appear as the supreme chastiser. Text 39. Sarge tapo aham rasayo navaye praje saha sane atha dharma makam manva amar amara manishaha ante tvam adharma haramanyu vasasuradya maya vibhutaya ima purushakti pajaha. At the beginning of creation, there are penance. Myself, Brahma, and the Priyapatis, the great sages who generate. Then, during the maintenance of the creation, there are Lord Vishnu, the demigods with controlling powers, and the kings of the different planets. But at the end, there is a religion, and then Lord Shiva, and the atheists, full of anger, etc. All of them are different representative manifestations of the energy of the supreme power, the Lord. Text 40. Vishnu nu virya gananam kato Vishnu nu virya gananam katam prihati ha ya pativani api kavir vimam me rajyam si 
चकांबा स्वरहासकालतात्रिपृष्ठ यस्मत्रिसम्यम सदनात उरु कंपयानम who can describe completely the powers of vishnu even the scientists who might have counted the particles of the atoms of the universe cannot do so because it is he only who is who in his form of trivikrama moved his leg effortlessly beyond the topmost planet satyaloka up to the neutral state of three modes of material nature and all were moved text 41 mm-hmm. 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 neither i nor all the sages born before you know fully the omnipotent personality of godhead so what can others who are born after us know about him even the first incarnation of the lord namely sesha has not been able to reach the limit of such knowledge although he is describing the qualities of the lord with 100 faces text 42 yesham sayeshta bhagavan dayayet ananta सर्वात्मनाश्रिता can overcome the insurmountable ocean of illusion and can understand the lord but those who are attached to this body which is meant to be eaten at the end by dogs and jackals cannot do so text 43 to 45 veda hamango paramashya hi yog mayam mayam yuyam bhavasya cha bhagwan atha daitya varya पत्नी मनो स च मनुष्य तद आत्मजश्च अप्राचीन भारी रिपु अंग अंग उता ध्रुवश्च इक्ष्वाकुर ऐल मुचुकंद विदेह गादि राघव अंबरीश सागर गया नहुषद्या मंदात्र अलका उपेन्द्र तथा पार्थास्तिसेनाविदुरासुतासुतादेवर्यः powerful shiva the great king of the atheist family namely prahlad maharaj swayambhuva manu his wife satrupa his sons and daughters like priyavrata utanapad akuti devahuti and prasuti pra- prachinibari uh, ribhu anga the father of vena maharaj druva ekshwaku aila mukuchan mukuchun kunda uh, maharaj janaka uh, gaddi ragu um, ambarisha sagara gaya nahusha mandhata alarka satad anve anu ranti devi uh, bishma bali amrutya raya 
Delipa Saubari Uttanka Tibi Devala Piplada Sar Saraspata Uttava Parasara Purishina Sena Vibhishan Sana Anuman Sukadeva Goswami Arjun Arsti Sena Vidura Shruta Deva etc. Text 46 Devai Vidanti Atitaranti Cha Dev Mayam Sri Sudra Huna Sabra Api Papajiva Yadi Adbuta Krama Parayana Shila Shiksha Tri Tri Atiryaga Janapi Kim U Shuta Shuta Dharana Ye Surrendered souls, even from groups leading sinful lives such as women, the laborer class, the mountaineers, and the Siberians, or even the birds and beasts, can also know about the science of Godhead and become liberated from the crutches of the illusory energy by surrendering unto the pure devotees of the Lord and by following in their footsteps in devotional service. Text 47. Shashvat para shatam ab abayam prati bod matram shuddam samam sad asata paramatma tatvam sabdona yatra puru karakavam kriyato maya parieti abimukecha vilan jamana tadvai padam bhagavata para Mashya Pumsho Brahmeti Advidur Ajasra Sukham Vishokam. What is realized as the Absolute Brahman is full of unlimited bliss without grief. That is certainly the ultimate phase of the Supreme Enjoyer, the Personality of Godhead. He is eternally void of all disturbances and is fearless. He is complete uh, com consciousness as opposed to matter, uncontaminated and without distinctions. He is the principal primeval cause of all causes and effects, in whom there is no sacrifice for fruitive activities and in whom the illusory energy does not stand. Text 48 Sadriyanyamya yatayoyam kritahetim Jahyu Swarad Iva Nipana Kanitram Indraha. In such a transcendental state, there is no need of artificial control of the mind, mental speculation, or meditation, as performed by the gnanis and yogis. One gives up such uh, processes as the heavenly king, Indra, forgoes the trouble to dig a well. Sashayasam api bidur bhagavan yatoshya bhava swabhava vihitashya sata prashiti dehe swadatu vigame anu vishiryan yamane vyome vatatra purusho na vishiryatejaha. The personality of Godhead is the supreme master of everything, auspicious, because the results of whatever actions are performed by the living being in either the material or spiritual existence are awarded by the Lord. As such, he is the ultimate benefactor. Every individual living entity is unborn, and therefore, even after the annihilation of the material elementary body, the living entity exists Exactly like the air within the body. Text 50. So I am te bihitas tata Bhagavan Vishwa Bhavana Samasena Hare Nanyad Anyasmat Sad Asad Chayat. My dear son, I have now explained in brief the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is creator of the manifested worlds. Without him, Hari, the Lord, there are no other causes of the phenomenal and non uh, man, nominal, no, nominal. No, nominal existences. Text 51. 
इदं भगवत नाम यन्मे भगवात संग्रहोय अयम विभूतिपुली गुरु ओ नारद दिस साइंस ऑफ गॉड श्रीमद भागवतम वो स्पोकन टू मी इन समरी बाय द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड एंड इट इज इट वॉज स्पोकन एज द अक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ इज डाइवर्स पोटेंसीज प्लीज एक्सपांड दिस साइंस योर सेल्फ ट्रांसिडेंटलिटी super soul of every living being and the samam bonam source of all energies text 53 mayam varnayato mushya ishwarashya nu modaha modata shunvata shraddaya nityam maya yatma namuhyati the lord's activities in association with his different energies should be described appreciated and heard in accordance with the teachings of the supreme lord if this is done regularly with devotion and respect one is sure to get out of the illusory energy of the lord thus and bhakti vedan purport of second canto 7th chapter of shrimad bhagavatam entitled scheduled incarnations with specific functions hari krishna hari krishna apologies for any mistakes thank you Hare Krishna, I am Anki Radhamathi, and Shyam Govinda Prabhu. Thank you very much for your recitation. Very nicely done. Nice to meet you all after some time. Thank you, dear devotees, for gathering together for today's online session. Today we are going to conclude chapter number seven of the second canto, entitled "Scheduling Incarnations with Specific Functions," and we are going to do a summary. Um, so, hope that's okay with everyone. Ah, uh, we'll start off by reciting the Mangala Charanam praise. Please feel free to join in. Be unmuted, mics. Om Madhyana Timirandasya Kiranjana Shalakaya Chakshurunlita Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha. Sri Chaitanya Manobisam Stapita Mienabutale Swayam Ramaya Dati Swapadantikam Vandiham Shri Guru Shri Yata Patakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Sya Shri Rupam Sahagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Bitam Tam Sajivam साधवैतमचैतन्यदेवीराधाकृष्णापदराधाकमस्ते सप्तकांचन गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुतदेवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशकल्पुर्वी कृपा सिंधु पतिना पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैता श्री गौरभक्त हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय पुतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवाद अस्तचारिणे शिल प्रभु
So it was a very enlivening chapter. <clears throat> and the trigger for this chapter, that means what led to this chapter being spoken or these verses spoken, <clears throat> was uh, the question uh, raised in the previous chapter number six. If we recall the sequence uh, of events, uh, Maharaj Parikshit had posed a number of questions to Shukdev Goswami. And Shukdev Goswami took a very interesting approach to answering Maharaj Parikshit's questions. He said, actually, the answers of all your questions was given previously. Those very similar questions was asked a very long time ago by Sri Narad Muni to Lord Brahma. So I will quote this conversation and that conversation, through hearing it, all your questions will be answered. So uh, a number of the questions were gone through and, and answered. And the chapter number six um, concluded uh, with the theme, it is not possible to completely know the Lord. Yeah. So Sri Narad had asked Lord Brahma, um, how do we know him? How do we know the Lord? And Lord Brahma uh, concluded the chapter by saying, I will now describe the Leela avatars. Um, so basically what Brahma was saying is, I will briefly explain uh, the Lord incarnates and performs various activities, various leelas. And through these activities and these leelas, we can get to know the Lord. We can get to know his qualities. We can get to know his potencies. Um, we can get to know his superhuman abilities. So very briefly, um, Lord Brahma does that. And this is what whole chapter 7 is about. The overall arching theme there is, how can we get to know the Lord? So... I'll just give an overview, I'll share an overview of this uh, chapter, and then we can maybe discuss or ask some questions. So I'll share my screen of how this chapter is broken up. So the first uh, 39 verses of this chapter are describing the various incarnations of the Lord. And those incarnations can be broken down into different categories. Um, Leela avatars, Guna avatars, Manvata, Manvantara avatars, Shaktyavesh avatars, uh, avatars specifically related to Kali Yuga. And beautifully, uh, and we can see this is what the whole focus of Bhagavatam is. Um, particular when it comes to uh, description of Lord Krishna, there's a bit of a pause. Uh, and all the way from verses 26 to 35, Lord Krishna is being described. Uh, so it gives us an inclination that Lord Krishna, as we learned from previous chapter, he is Swayam Bhagavan. And it was very interesting, uh, which Lord Krishna performed so many leelas, which leelas were given focus on. And Srila Prabhupada makes the, the point that when this conversation took place, at that time Lord Krishna had not even appeared. But uh, Lord Brahma, he had this ability to see the uh, Lord's activities, future incarnation. So that, that was the first part of this. 
And then we moved on to a very interesting uh, theme. As I said previously before, the question was, how can we know him? And verse 46, 40 to 46, there's a statement that was made there that it is impossible to understand the greatness, two, two qualities of the Lord, his greatness, okay? Impossible to understand the greatness of the Lord. And as quickly as it is said, it is impossible to understand the greatness of the Lord. Very quickly, it is mentioned how it is possible. So that was very interesting. Uh, and verses 40 to 46, verse 40, we see there that um, no one can describe the Lord's greatness. And particular mention is given of Anantashesh, who has thousands and thousands of mouths. And since time immemorial, he's been trying to um, recite the Lord's pastors, but he can never complete them because they are so unlimited. But then a very encouraging section appears. And that section is, but it is possible to understand the Lord. It is possible to understand the Lord simply by the Lord's mercy. By Krishna's mercy, uh, we can understand him. One Srila Prabhupada was speaking to the devotees, and the devotees, every time they heard Srila Prabhupada speak, they were simply astounded um, about how he could speak on practically any subject matter and how vast his knowledge was. So one day one devotee asked um, Srila Prabhupada, do you know everything? And Prabhupada said, no, I don't. But Krishna knows and he tells me. So Prabhupada was saying that it's impossible to know, but Krishna can reveal to us whatever he desires us to know. And in the same way, um, if we desire to know Krishna, we can try till we blew in the face, but we will fail. But if Krishna is pleased with us from within the heart, he can reveal. Therefore, he said at the stage of Baba, um, Krishna, when he's extremely pleased with the devotee, he bestows two shaktis upon the devotee. First shakti is the Ladini shakti. Uh, and the second is the Chit Shakti. The Ladini Shakti is the pleasure-giving potency. So when Krishna bestows this pleasure-giving potency on the devotee, then the devotee becomes extremely attractive to Krishna. And then when Krishna bestows the Chit potency, which is knowledge potency, it's like a Eureka moment. moment. The devotee suddenly feels Oh, I, I know so much now about Krishna. Krishna reveals himself through this chit, bestowing the devotee with the chit potency. And, and it's like suddenly, you know, although we would think we know Krishna, but unlimited about Krishna's qualities, his form, his beauty, his leela, his name, everything gets revealed. And then interestingly, uh, verses 45, 43 to 45, um, Lord Brahma gives a long list of uh, devotees um, who got to know Krishna through their surrender. Now, if you look at those devotees who are named there, it's a very interesting mix. It's a very interesting mix. And... Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, there is um, animals, there is shudras, uh, there are children, Prahlad, Dhruva, there are kings, uh, there are some who are considered to be lowborn, like Vidura, 
And there's a whole cross section of names that are given there. Um, are you able to see my screen, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Yes, would you? Yeah. So there's a lot of very interesting list of names. And if we scrutinizingly study those names, we don't see any big pundits there. We don't see the name any big qualified prime minister. We don't see anyone with very big posts list there. So the point that Brahma is making is a, is, is a very important point, which verse um, 46 focuses on. That even the most qualified person, disqualified person, and even Siberians are mentioned there. Siberia is one of the most coldest places on earth. I once saw a movie or a documentary about Siberia. It is so cold there that there's no scope to grow vegetables or get vegetables. And practically they live on eating meat. They get most of the sustenance from meat. But this verse is mentioning specifically even Siberians. Even Siberians can get to know. And I was listening to a class, I think it was yesterday, where Srila Prabhupada makes a similar point about even most disqualified persons, even dog eaters. They can get the chance to become great devotees of the Lord. And to know the Lord by the mercy of the devotees of the Lord, the pure devotees of the Lord. And this verse makes the specific, uh, it goes like one level below surrender to the Lord. And that makes the point of surrendering to the pure devotees of the Lord. And actually these two verses, they mirror very closely a conversation between Lord uh, Krishna and Uddhava in the 11th canto. Well, Lord Krishna explains there, it is very difficult to know him, but it becomes possible to know him by surrendering into the pure devotees. And then Krishna gives a long list of people who have got his mercy. And very similar to this list here, that list has a mixture of demons, children, you know, women, ordinary persons, shudras, animals, animals. Recently, uh, we were discussing one verse from Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And I, I'll just give me a minute, I'll see if I can find it. It's so interesting. I just want to read this to you where. Okay. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he wrote, he said, as soon as a single person will have conceived the sincere desire of undertaking the promulgation of the tidings of the Gaudiya literature to the peoples of this world, he is thereby enrolled among the agents of divine mercy and power to forward the fulfillment of this express wish of the Supreme Lord. The Gaudiya literature will not long remain confined to the Bengali-speaking people. It will in a short time expand and display its full brilliancy through the medium of all languages, including those of birds, beasts, and even the vegetable tribes. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he made a prediction that this, these messages about Lord Krishna through the pure devotees, uh, through all languages, they'll even reach the birds, the beast. And he even says, even says he uses the words, the vegetable tribes. Now this is practically inconceivable. How the vegetable tribes will get the message um, of uh, the Gaudiya Vaishnava literatures. 
But these can happen through the mercy of the pure devotees and the mercy of the Lord. So that was uh, that particular section. And then we moved on to uh, a description of the Paramatma, Brahman, and Bhagavan feature of the Lord. And uh, there is a particular verse here. Now, this is very interesting because the, the Bhagavan feature of the Lord, getting to know the Bhagavan feature of the Lord, which is all about this verses, Krishna as a person, it, uh, it explains that how um, jnanis and yogis cannot get to understand the Bhagavan feature. And it is the Bhagavan, Bhagavan who is the ultimate benefactor. We cannot have a relationship with um, Brahman. We cannot render service to Brahman. We cannot have a relationship with Paramatma, as Krishna says in the in the Bhagavad Gita, Upadrashta Anumantacha um, Bhartha Bhokta Maheshwaram. Uh, Krishna says that the Paramatma feature is witnesser and permitter. Witnessing the activities and giving permission. But there is no scope to offer service to Paramatma. There is no scope to have personal relationship with Paramatma. It is only with Bhagavan that we have the opportunity to have a personal relationship, to render service. And therefore, 49, verse 49 says, Bhagavan is the ultimate benefactor, not Paramatma or Brahman. So, uh, you know, the Vaishnava Acharyas have explained that Srimad Bhagavatam explains about Bhagavan. It explains about Bhagavan. And these verses spoken by Lord Brahma makes that very, very clear. And then the last um, section of this verse resonated really, really nicely with me. Because um, it's dealing with the distribution, the dissemination of this knowledge. Um, and Lord, Lord Brahma is explaining how this knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam needs to be distributed. And when I saw this verse, I got very excited because most of you all know that my main service is the distribution of Srimad Bhagavatam. But it's so interesting, just so interesting for me so long ago in such an ancient conversation, in such an important conversation, the Lord Brahma himself uh, is stressing, uh, is stressing the point about distribution of this knowledge. Why? Uh, he, he makes the point that bhakti is characterized by hearing and chanting about the Lord's activities, which are spiritual and blissful. Uh, but the pastimes of the Purusha avatars dealing with Maya Shakti all related to Maya. Uh, so there's a subtle point that Lord Brahma is making here. So we spoke previously that, you know, there is there is the avatars that deal with the material world or the material energy. Those are the Purusha avatars. And then there is the avatars um, that deal with the spiritual world or come down to demonstrate the activities of the spiritual world. So understanding the, the potencies of the Lord uh, through his activities in the spiritual world is very, very important. Very, very important and paramount to our understanding of this chapter. What really stood out for me, and this is my own personal realization about this, this chapter, is the is the extent 
that Krishna goes to to attract us, to call us back, to take us back to where we belong. In so many features, in so many ways, Krishna is extending himself to perform um, wonderful activities. Srila Prabhupada says in one lecture, Urakrama Vikramana that the activities of the Lord are so attractive. It is only that these activities which enter the year holds off the conditioned soul, touches the contaminated heart, removes it of all the unwanted things. And then uh, bhakti is established within the heart as an irrevocable factor. So, this is the overall theme of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And here we get a, a summary of this verse. Um, I want to try something, dear devotees. I don't know if it'll succeed. Um, but I want to see if I can get you to share your realizations or anything thing that has really attracted you about this chapter. Now in the messages I'm going to share a link I want you all to try to see whether you could click on that link And where it takes you. Have you have you gone to the link? No, probably it says can't open. It says can't open. Yeah. Can't okay, open the link. Maybe, maybe I gave you the wrong feed bio. Uh Let me see if I put the right one. It's Febeo, F-E-E-B-E-O. Is that what oh, you're No, no, no. I, I made a mistake. Ah, but, right. <laughs> try, try this one. Okay. See, see if you can, you can go to that link. Still can't open, Prabhuji. Still can't open. Mine opened, Prabhuji. It says meeting, interactive meetings. Yes, feed bio. Okay. Now, if you manage to get into feed bio, F E E D B E O, feed bio dot com, enter this uh, joining code 48. One, Prabhuji, one second. Give me one second. Okay. Um, four eight. Off. One four four one four four zero zero. Okay. What what happens when you when you go there? List one Leela avatar. Okay. That's list the one. Question. Okay, yeah. List one Leela avatar. Uh, Prabhuji, just say the code again. Sorry, I'm on the link, but I missed out the code. Prabhuji, hurry go. Four eight one four four zero. Okay. Four eight one four four zero. Okay. 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 Good. Someone has written one. Okay. Another one. Lila avatars. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yes, Kapila. Buddha was Buddha, a Lila avatar. Okay, carry on, keep going.
Can you all see the different answers coming through on your screen? We can't see the answers, Prabhuji. Okay, okay, okay. I can see, Prabhuji. It's there for the answers. All right, okay. Um, all right. If we can pause there, I want to ask all the next question now. And I watch, I'm just doing a little trial because maybe at the end of the chapters, I can, I can like do a little quiz for everyone so you can write the answers. So I, the next one I've got is... Um, Can you see this one? What does it say? List one guna avatar. Can you see that? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, then guna avatar means what? The gunas, isn't it? So list one guna avatar. Many. Okay, that's nice. I see one come through. Someone says Lord Shiva. Someone says Lord Nityananda. Someone Lord Varaha. No, Guna Avatar means there's only three Guna Avatars. Guna means modes of nature. And Avatar means one is an incarnate as modes of nature. So there is a... Uh, uh, Sattva gun, Raja gun, and Tamagun. Sattva gun is which guna avatar? Lord Vishnu. Raja gun is who? Brahmaji. Lord Brahmaji. Brahmaji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Tamagun is Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Great. Prabhu, um, what is the code? Because I managed to get it, but I can't Okay, get it's, it it's four, four eight one four four zero. Four eight, eight one, one four, four four zero. Yeah. Okay. Should allow you to enter. Okay, and I want to try one more, one more thing. This is online, and then you can get the chance to express yourself verbally also. So the next one I want to uh, ask you all is, please share if there's any particular verse or point which struck you most in this chapter. Uh, have you seen that? Can you see that? Yes, Prabhuji, we can. Okay. So what I wanted to do in this one is to know, you know, we, we covered 53 verses. Some very, very interesting, um, you know, verses that could touch our heart, which this is the purpose of the Bhagavatam. Was there any philosophical point through the various verses that we've been discussing or any verse in particular, any word, in this chapter seven that really touch your heart and stuck and you take away uh, something from this chapter seven that you really remember. Feel free to share that. How many of you have had no luck in getting getting through to this? Is everyone managed to access it? No. No, Prabhuji, I didn't. Oh, you did not. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. Okay, I think the experiment works a little bit, but it's not as well um let me let me do something else right i'm going to share within the um in the chat 
the link to go straight to this uh, event. Try and see if that takes you there. Oh, nice. Some, some things are coming through. So one verse here. Uh, okay, so Rupa Mataji has written verse 51 to 53, where it says discussing. Well, let me share this so you can see also what's going on. Those who have not been able to access it. So dear devotees, this is um, the questions I am asking, and this is how everyone is live feeding through. Hopefully you can see this. So Rupa Mataji says, verses 51 to 53, where it says, discussing Lord Krishna's material energy is more important for neophytes than discussing Lord's internal spiritual energy. Mm, very interesting. Brahma delegates to Narada, the science of God, Srimad Bhagavatam, was spoken to me in summary by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he was spoken to you as the accumulation of his diverse potencies. Please expand the science yourself. And finally, to be engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord. Thank you for sharing that, Rupa Mataji. Okay. Um, so, dear devotees, it was a little experiment. I was trying it. I probably need to get it better organized. Um, so, you know, it's it's a way of interacting or for you all to give feedback besides the chat. Okay, someone in there, verse 46. Why is the woman classed as lower class? Um, well, from a bodily point of view, um, generally, according to, to Vedic scriptures, you know, because women um, are mothers, they have a nurturing... Um, uh, Say nurturing quality and, and and so on. It is just that it is it is said according to Vedic culture that maybe it is a little more um, a little more difficult um, for them to understand um, you know certain philosophical points and so on. Um, yeah, I'm just struggling a bit how to explain this. But in one sense, on the absolute sense, there is no lower and, and higher. You know, everyone is spirit, so it's just that the bodies, um, those who are in womanly bodies, uh, you know, they have um, maybe a slightly different nature uh, to assimilate you know certain aspects of uh, of philosophy but then we can see you know of all the devotees of krishna the gopis are the highest but they are not in material womanly bodies i don't think i've explained that very well let me think about it how to convey it. maybe some other point or if someone else feels they'd like to give their version Please feel free. So I'll pause here. Uh, I don't think my experiment works very well, but uh, it's possible to do certain things, I think, on this platform. And maybe in the future, we, we will try it. So I'm now going to conclude my presentation for today and I'm going to open up the class to questions, comments, reflections that anyone may have. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I will try the women kind of that answer. If I okay. may. Thank you. So, yeah, as as you are saying that um, everybody is a soul first, so anybody has got equal chance to 
you know, go back to Godhead. So it doesn't really matter which body, because uh, various times in the Bhagavatam, um, uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says like, you know, there is a verse: the thickets, the bushes, the birds, plants, beasts, everybody can you know become the devotee. So there is no such difference. On another hand, if we see the social system of Varnashram, then again, Kshatriya women, you know, wasn't that's not their profession to kind of become soldiers. So mm-hmm. in that, so Varna, in Varnashram, the Brahmanas are the high, so like Brahmanas, Kshatriya, Vaishyas, they will be the higher kind of thing, and men would be like working mm-hmm. on, on those Varnas. So may, and then Obviously, as you're saying, women are nurturing, caring. So it's kind of service-oriented work is for women. So on one national basis, maybe it's called women are inferior. So it's not kind of inferior in the sense of derogatory. It's just, you know, it's just, what do you say? Like Krishna is saying, every even the inferior, anybody in society who is inferior, superior, whatever it is, Anybody can become a devotee. So that's my understanding. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you for sharing. I think it's very much in line with what Srila Prabhupada taught us and explained to us. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else got any reflections on the chapter or the verse or the overview or reflections you'd like to share today? Uh, I'm Krishna Prabhuji, Madhanur Pranam, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Prabhuji, I, um, and first of all, I apologize, Prabhuji, because uh, it was a bit on and off for me. My kids were asking stuff in the middle. So I missed one of the things that you said. And and so I wanted to understand a little bit more on that one. So, Prabhuji, you mentioned about the, uh, did I get this right? The Haladini Shakti of God. Yeah. And uh, you said the, the one that makes us remember everything. And the one Shakti is about the all attractive. Mm-hmm. What Could I was you... trying, trying to explain yes. here, um, so, you know, Krishna has three primary potencies, I mean, the Sat, Chit, and Ananda. Sat means eternal, Chit means knowledge, and Ananda means bliss. So mm-hmm. the personification of the Ananda, um, um, the energy is the Ladini Shakti, uh, for knowledge is Chit Shakti, and for eternity is uh, Sat Shakti. So Chit Shakti means knowledge giving potency. Ladini Shakti means pleasure giving potency. So our Vaishnava Charyas, our Gauri Vaishnava literatures explain that um, it's very difficult for us to know Krishna. Very difficult, because he's inconceivable. And also, in one sense, it's difficult for Krishna to be attracted to us. Because, I mean, what have we got really speaking to, to, to attract Krishna? But our devotion and our surrender. So it is said that when Krishna is pleased, uh, with a particular devotee, he will bestow what is called Kripa Shakti. That means the mercy Shakti. And Kripa Shakti is mainly made up of two Shaktis. The Chit Shakti and the Ladini Shakti. Means the knowledge potency and the pleasure potency. Mm -hmm. So when Krishna bestows this Kripa Shakti on a particular devotee, then by dint of receiving this shakti, that devotee becomes very attractive to Krishna, just like Krishna is supremely attracted to Srimati Radharani hmm? uh, through this pleasure-giving potency. One, uh, one outcome of receiving this shakti is Krishna becomes attracted. The living entity becomes very attractive to Krishna. And secondly, by dint of receiving the the shit shakti, which is the knowledge potency, it's like a, a light bulb appearing. Suddenly we feel that we know Krishna because Krishna reveals himself, you know. 
because we are born in ignorance. We practically don't know anything. But when Krishna bestows this chit shakti, this knowledge giving potency, it's like suddenly Krishna becomes revealed to us. You know, we get to know and understand so much about Krishna. And then just like Krishna is becoming very attractive to us, more attractive to us, by dint of receiving the Ladini Shakti, Krishna becomes even more attractive to us by receiving the Chit Shakti or the knowledge potency. It's like a revelation of who Krishna is, his qualities, his Leela and so on. So that was what I was trying to explain. Thank Does you, Prabhuji. But, but yes, it's, it makes sense. Thank you, Prabhuji. But is it, it's and, it's not either or, right? Both, yeah, both. Yes, and yeah, okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hari Bo. I'm saying the Kripa Shakti has these two cons constituents. The Ladini okay. Shakti. Yeah. Hari Bo. Thank you, Prabhuji. Anything else from anyone? Okay, nothing else. Thank you very much. All glories to your service. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Banchakalpa to the beans. Ja, Kripa Sindhu be ever cha. Patitanam Pavani be Vaishnavi be no more, no more. Anantakoli Vaishnav in the key jai. Srila Prabhupada key jai. Srimad Bhagavatam key jai. Okay. I go to Premanandi. Hari Hari Bhagavan. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.